This is our just-in-time lecture for 7-Eleven movement of gas particles. In this particular lecture, I've not only included those questions with the lowest success rate, but I've also included a couple of others um, because there was a theme here with significant figures and not reading the question carefully. Let's begin. For this question, I asked you to recall some information way back from chapter 6. We had to pull this forward because now we're working with kinetic energy equals one half mv squared, where m is meters, nope, not volume, um, m is um, mass and v is velocity. Real easy to make that mistake. The most common wrong answer was mass and volume. And I know we've been in that land with the ideal gas laws, but we do have to think about this being mass and velocity when we're talking about the movement of gas particles. The key thing on this slide was to notice that here at low temperatures, we saw that V average was a very, very sharp peak and the speeds of the gas particles are all very close to this average. So A was the best answer. This is in contrast to the very high temperatures we saw at high temperatures that the average speeds of the particles were very broadly um, arranged around that average velocity. It's very important to keep track of your units. Here, I want you to look at one joule and recognize that one joule is a derived unit made up of kilograms meters squared per second squared. That's important for some of our calculations that follow this slide. So the best answer here was A. On this question, I gave you the temperatures T equals 25 degrees Celsius. I understand you want to take 25 and add to that 273.15 to get 298.15. But the key point here is that I wanted three sig figs. The most common wrong answer was 298.15. So Really pay attention to the significant figures so you don't lose easy points. On this question, I asked you to apply some Gen Chem 1A skills, specifically calculate the molar mass of nitrogen N2. So we see that on the periodic table, one nitrogen atom is about 14.01 grams per mole. So we needed to double that. And then again, the sig figs is what got everybody here. You get 28.02, but then if you go to three sig figs, you got to drop that last one. What I saw was that instead of a lot of people answering 28.0, I got 28. And then a lot of people also just reported the mass of one nitrogen atom. I needed a nitrogen molecule. All right, so sig figs killed us on this one again. If we start out with 28 grams of N2, and we want to convert grams to kilograms. All right, so we've got to move that decimal place and we see that we get 0 0.028, but that is only two sig figs. We have to include this zero down here for bragging rights. This zero is significant. So again, another first semester Gen Chem problem tripping us up watch the significant figures, make sure you're including enough. This is not a significant zero. All right, got to know the difference between diffusion and this one, which is effusion. All right, diffusion is always talking about gas particles, and these gas particles are spreading out into a larger vessel. If you're having trouble understanding that, recall that there is a video in the textbook that demonstrates this. There's also an activity that shows how it's different from effusion. So we're looking at gas particles going through a tiny hole into a vacuum without collisions. All right, so here when we're talking about effusion rates, we see that our NOx gas effused at a rate that is 0.834 times the rate of effusion for oxygen. So if we look at these rates, the rate of NOx over the rate of O2, it's 0.834 times that for O2, which means that if you need to, put that understood one underneath. 
So you see that O2 is going to be moving faster than NOx, which is moving slower. It's only moving at a fraction of the speed of O2. So given the effusion rate of 0.834, because we know heavier things move slower, we know that NOx must have a larger molar mass than oxygen. All right, so on this one, we were to finish the calculation for the molar mass of NOx. So I see that I messed that up, so ignore that. And where we were at on that slide, I had presented the formula, the rate of NOx over the rate of O2 is equal to the square root of the mass of O2 over the molar mass of NOx. So we get 0.834 is the square root of 31.998 over the molar mass of NOx. To solve this, we're going to square both sides. We get 0.834 squared equals 31.998 divided by the molar mass of NOx. So multiply both sides by molar mass NOx, we get 0.834 squared molar mass NOx. 31.998 divide both sides by 0.834 squared that cancels on that side and we should have gotten the molar mass of NOx equal to two significant figures 46 grams per mole all right setting this one up if we want to solve for x in this formula we're going to say that we have one mole of nitrogen with a molar mass of 14.01 plus x moles of oxygen with a molar mass of 15.999 that's the x we're solving for and that's going to be equal to 46. so if we take 15.999 x and subtract 14 from both sides we get 46 minus 14.01 gives us 31.99, divide both sides by 15.999, and we get x is equal to 1.999. So we see that the best formula for this is an NO2. Um, don't know what happened here, but I saw wrong answers anywhere from one third to 90 to um, answers with exponential notation. Uh, three was a really common wrong answer. So just remember this little bit of algebra to get you through this type of a problem.